because I was trained as a writer and as a librarian, but as a practicing Christian. I, um, I firmly feel that the UFO message has a good deal to offer to anyone who is either a Christian or not. The um, spiritual has often disturbed those who attempt to go to church and don't find everything they want there. Um, there are different paths for different people. And what the UFO message has as its very unique gift is an ability to cut through the theology of various religions and deal with the heart of truth, whatever that may be, on a very personal basis so that you can um, work yourself on your own uh, path, whether it is Christianity or whatever it is that you really need for your own spiritual evolution. Ron Kirk, our floor man that I mentioned uh, while the break was on, or is there any chance the UFOs are looking for one particular person? Uh, or a person that would fit into what they want to say, tell the world, hey, here's the message. Well, there are different types of UFO contact because there are so many different types of UFOs, it seems, from so many different places. There, there seems to be just precisely the type you're talking about. They're looking for certain people. In the case of Charlie Hickson at Pascagoula uh, in 1973, uh, he was taken on board the ship, we believe, because he was selected. He, there was a definite reason. There's a long story behind why that happened. But uh, he was one of these people. Now, in other cases, uh, this may not, uh, they're not looking for anybody. They just happen to land and they uh, come in contact with somebody. It's simply because in one case we've got a special mission UFO who's coming here for a specific thing like Charlie Hickson. In another case we've got just a random uh, contact. So either, either answer is right. Okay. Hope you got your pencil. Here's the address. If you make a sighting, Aerial Phenomena Research Organization or APRO 3910 East Kleindale Road. 3910 East Kleindale Road, that's K-L-E-I-N-D-A-L-E, -E, Tucson, Arizona, zip code 85712, 85712. Now they will also supply people with information uh, if somebody just wanted to write and ask a question. Certainly membership subscriptions are something like $10 a year. They would give you that information. They have a regular newsletter. Okay. Line number two, you're on open up. Yes, I wanted to know what uh, you think about the theory that aliens live in the Earth's core and get in there by opening just the North and South Pole and the coincidence that Betty and Barney Miller had when they described the part of the universe where the aliens came from and the computer that mapped the location in space that was the same as she described it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Who wants to answer that? Yeah. I'm not going to comment on the... Uh hollow earth theory because I have no uh, data on it at all. I just I know nothing about it. I know of it. I've read the books. I haven't got any opinion at all. About the uh, Betty and Barney Hill thing, uh, they were taken on board a UFO in 1961 and they started the uh, chain of physical examination type experiences on board UFOs. There have been lots and lots of those since then. Uh, Betty Hill was able to remember under hypnosis a star map that she saw in the UFO and uh, uh, Mrs. Fish, just uh, about two, three years ago, just a few years ago, was able, after making hundreds of models, uh, able to develop a computerized model of the star map and find that it actually represented a system of stars very, very close to the horizon uh, when viewed from this uh, hemisphere. Uh, however, the direction of view was not from the Earth out, but from beyond the stars toward the Earth, and it fit perfectly. So this is one of the uh, strange coincidences that uh, uh, make you uh, stop and think possibly the hard data on UFOs is uh, a valuable thing. Sadly enough, Zeta Reticuli is not visible from the observatories in North America, and we don't have observatories in South America that can keep watch for radio signals from Zeta Reticuli. 
Line number three, you're on open up. Hello there. I would like to uh, ask uh, Mr. Elkins uh, about the power plant. You made reference earlier to the power plant in the in a ship, and uh, I'd like to know what uh, what he can tell us about the power plants, the way that they are powered. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, <laughs> if I knew how they were powered, I'd build one. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, all I can tell you is the can geometry. The uh, geometry was what was, is c called the uh, classical uh, Venusian bell craft. There are three spheres on the bottom of the ship. You only see a hemisphere from the outside or the inside. The sergeant saw the hemisphere from the inside. They're at 120 degree intervals, and then they have rods running from the spheres to a central control box in the center of the ship. Uh, this, the Sergeant Moody's observation was the inside observation one would expect from the outside geometry of the classical uh, bell craft. Okay, line four, you're on open up. Yes, we're from Pocatello, Idaho. We live here, and uh, one question that we did want to ask, we, about two years ago, we had a lot of uh, controversy here on cattle mutilation. There was never any evidence of uh, malpractice or anything and uh, the sexual organs of the animals have been taken out. No blood was found around the animals and they had no explanation for it. And we was wondering if you could give us some kind of information or if you knew anything on this to tell us because we never did find out anything what, what the answer was to it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks for your call all the way from Pocatello. That's one of the things we're still working on very actively. Uh, there are thousands of these mutilations all over the place. Uh, talked for about an hour a few months ago to a deputy sheriff in uh, Montana uh, who had investigated oh, uh, several dozen of the mutilations. Uh, they, in many cases, the cattle have been found in fresh snow, no tracks leading to the cow or away from it, just a melted area of snow about six feet in diameter around the cow. Mutilation uh, seems to be standard, that is certain parts are removed, the same parts are removed each time. There have been numerous unidentified objects sighted in the air close to the mutilation sites. Now, this type of phenomena is not related to, and we're pretty certain of this, is not related to the other type of UFO contact. This is a separate phenomena, but it, it is a paranormal phenomena. That is, it's, a, it's the type of phenomena that we were talking about, the materialization type of phenomena. Uh, there is a watery theory available, but uh, it's cumbersome long and I can't get into it now. I, I really uh, can't say too much more about this at this time because our data just uh, isn't good enough. There's a story that's been in the paper. It was in January, then again earlier this week, uh, from Port Lavaca, Texas. They've had some strange, unidentified noises out there, like a sonic boom. Uh, Are you familiar with that? Nobody yeah, can explain this, it. The yeah. story said smoke detectors in homes were activated right before the noises started. This, this, this is sort of a uh, some, this. Uh, I was personally involved with uh, just uh, about a month and a half ago. I've forgotten the exact date. But the sonic the boom started over the East Coast about two months ago. Maybe New Jersey, ago. if two I'm not ago. mistaken. Yeah. Uh, just before they started, I happened to be sitting across the breakfast table from Andre Puharich when he started getting a communication on his wristwatch. If you've read the book, you know about his watch communications. He has a double watch, and he gets a code. He has a book coming out this summer that tells all about the watch communications. It's called Time No Longer. But he started getting communication. He says, hey, I'm getting one. And I went over and looked at his watch. And sure enough, uh, it had stopped on the 9, and everything was going along nicely. Well, the, the message was very short. It said, the decree of the 9, explosions boiling. We didn't know what it meant. A few days later, the explosions started going off. So we're still working on it. We haven't got any idea what the message means or what the explosions mean, but possibly he'll get another communication and we'll find out. Okay, we're just about out of time. The book, once again, is 
Secrets of the UFO, and it's co-authored by Don Elkins and Carla Ruckert, who were kind enough to stay up to this early hour and answer all the nice calls we had and talk to us a little bit about UFOs. And once again, if we make a sighting or if make contact with one, be nice to them, right? Right. <laughs> They're nice people. <laughs> okay. And uh, we gave the address a couple times on the air for the people that want to pick up your book. It tells you all about the UFOs. It goes from as we said earlier, different stories of sightings to the telepathic communications, interesting book. And thanks again for being with us. And that's open up for this morning.